The latest now in Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's longtime confidant, is now being held at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn before her first court appearance. And this morning, pressure is growing on Prince Andrew to cooperate with prosecutors. James Longman is at Buckingham Palace with the story. Good morning, James. Yeah, good morning, George. Prince Andrew was forced to quit public life after his disastrous interview with the BBC over his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Now that she has been arrested, the spotlight is back on the prince. Ghislaine Maxwell, the alleged co-conspirator and ex-girlfriend of accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, is back in New York this morning. Transferred here to a federal prison in Brooklyn, she's set to face a judge in the coming days for her alleged involvement in Jeffrey Epstein's sex crime allegations. The 58-year-old British socialite is accused of facilitating Epstein's sex crimes by helping him recruit, groom and ultimately abuse three unnamed teenage victims between 1994 and 1997. Now all eyes are on Epstein and Maxwell's longtime friend and associate, Prince Andrew. All of this goes back to your friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Mm. How did you first become friends? How did you meet? Well, I met through his girlfriend um, back in 1999, who, um, and I'd known her since uh, she was at university in the UK. Andrew now reportedly cancelling his upcoming annual golf trip to Spain following Maxwell's arrest. Andrew, Queen Elizabeth's second eldest son, stepped back from his royal duties in November after questions about his friendship with Epstein resurfaced. In a defamation suit against Maxwell, Virginia Roberts Gaffray says Maxwell ordered her to have sex with Andrew on three occasions, allegations both Maxwell and Andrew deny. His girlfriend, Galen Maxwell, your old friend, yep. was, victims say, complicit in his behaviour. Well, that bit I can't help you with because I've no idea. The Queen has had to deal with many royal scandals, as the tabloids call them, but this actually eclipses all of them. Now, this newly surfaced photo from 2002 shows Maxwell sitting on the throne at Buckingham Palace with actor Kevin Spacey. The tour of the palace reportedly set up by Prince Andrew himself. It's deeply disrespectful. The fact is Prince Andrew, even though this may have taken place in a moment of high jinx, has done a disrespect to his mother and father. Now, Maxwell will appear in court on July 14th for her bail hearing. She'll appear via video link. Investigators say she does represent a flight risk because of all that money found in her various bank accounts and her three passports. George. OK, thanks very much for our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, for more on this right now. Uh, Dan, let's start out talking about Prince Andrew. He hasn't yet spoken to prosecutors. Can they force him to talk? Well, look, they can try to force him to testify. They could subpoena him, for example, as a witness, but that would only be enforceable in the United States. And then let's even assume he travels to the United States, they haul him into a courtroom, and then he says, I invoke my right against self-incrimination. So there's really almost no way to force him to cooperate as a witness. How strong is this case for the prosecution against Maxwell? Well, look, you've got both factual and legal challenges here. Uh, the factual challenges are the fact that it's 25 years old. You're talking about instances in the mid-90s. And so any case that's brought that involves uh, allegations of actions 25 years ago have problems like times and dates can get blurred. Those can be tricky, tricky issues in a case like this. And then you've got the legal side, which is expect her to make arguments for example, about a statute of limitation, and it's very complicated because the law was changed. I think prosecutors are probably on pretty strong ground there. But you'll also see an argument made by her, which is that Jeffrey Epstein entered into a deal with a different federal prosecutor's office that she wouldn't be prosecuted. So expect to see first the legal challenges, and then if it continues forward, uh, the factual issues as well. There's also all this chatter out there about what else she knows, who else she could implicate in all this, how much leverage does she have with prosecutors? Well, yeah, that, that's what we don't know. I mean, everyone's sort of saying, oh, she's going to cut a deal. Well, we don't know that she's going to cut a deal. I mean, remember, both sides have to want to enter into that deal. Prosecutors have to believe she's got information that they really need and they want. And typically, that would mean on a more severe or significant crime than the one that she's accused of. And second, you've got to get her 
to want to cooperate, to feel that it is worthwhile for her. So I think we're still a long ways away from being able to say that there's going to be a deal cut in this case. She's also facing perjury charges. Is that an easier prosecution? For, for the SDNY? It may be, because the perjury allegations relate to statements that she made in 2016. Now, it does relate to some of the, the same actions, meaning lying about whether she was involved in certain activities uh, that are consistent with the other allegations in the indictment. But at least there, you're talking about words that she uttered in the last few years. The fact that much of this case is going to be based on actions, events, times and dates that happened 25 years ago make the other four charges, six total, four uh, related to the past, two related to perjury, make this far from a slam dunk case. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.